Okay, so today we're diving into something pretty powerful. We've got excerpts from The Future Ahead, and this is a memoir by War. And what makes these excerpts so fascinating is that we're getting them raw and unedited. It's like a window into his life, you know, a life that was completely upended by the Sudanese Civil War. Yeah, and it's interesting because when we were talking about what to cover, you mentioned how interested you are in resilience. And War's story, it's like the definition of resilience, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. I mean, to go from a childhood in a small Sudanese town to... Uh... And he describes this town, Puryang, so vividly. It's like you can picture it, you know, playing that bird game with his brother, making toys out of mud. It's just this really simple life. It's important to remember that backdrop, that whole culture. He's coming from a cattle herding culture. And he even talks about the Dinka marriage customs. Which are really interesting, actually. They're so deeply tied to that cattle herding way of life, you know, representing their connection to the land and their livestock. It's a world where tradition and community mean everything. But even within that very traditional world, you can see this thirst for knowledge in war. Even as a kid, like he actually convinces his dad to let him go to school. Which was very unusual. It wasn't the norm at all. Exactly. And that just speaks volumes about about the kind of person he was, you know, even then. Yeah, and that that desire to learn, it never left him. I mean, think about it. His formal education was completely disrupted, but he never stopped seeking knowledge. That ultimately led him to becoming an author. You can see those seeds planted early on, even in these raw, unedited pieces of writing. And then 1984 happens, everything changes. And he doesn't sugarcoat it at all. He describes the rising tensions, the outbound of civil war, the absolute terror that his family had to face. You can feel the weight of it all when you read his words. This wasn't just some distant conflict either. It was North versus South Sudan. Mm. And it was fueled by these really deeply rooted cultural and religious differences that had been simmering for, for decades, really. Yeah, and to fully grasp what he went through, you have to understand that context. Absolutely. He even talks about hiding from soldiers, that constant fear, asking himself, when will you die? He even writes about how his family was scattered during that time. Some of them he never saw again. I can't even imagine. Imagine the emotional toll that would take on anyone, let alone, you know, a, a young person. And this is where you start to see his personal reflections intertwining with his experiences. Like he starts to grapple with his faith, he even questions where God was in all of this suffering. Yeah, it's in those moments of reflection that you start to see the philosophical depth of his story, of his journey, really starting to unfold. Mm -hmm. He eventually escapes the violence in Periang, makes his way to Khartoum. But it wasn't the safe haven he'd hoped for, was it? Not at all. In fact, he even goes so far as to call it a place of slow death. That's powerful imagery, isn't it? Yeah, it really struck me too. And mm. it makes you realize it wasn't just the physical hardship, but the loss of hope, you know? Yeah. That struggle to find meaning in the midst of just utter chaos. And you really see him wrestling with these huge questions. Like, he even questions why humans suffer at all. Yeah. Why do bad things happen? Almost like he's searching for answers, not just for himself, but for everyone, right? Exactly. Yeah. It's deep stuff. He's digging into some seriously fundamental questions about good and evil, mm -hmm. about how we make sense of a world that often feels random and unfair. And this one line, it just stayed with me. He says, life is an unstructured test you take every day. Wow. Think about that for a minute, knowing everything he went through. It's a powerful thought, isn't it? It is. It reminds us that even when we're faced with these impossible situations, we still have choices. We can choose how we react, how we learn, how we grow. And that's exactly what he did. He did. He refused to be defined by his past, by those experiences. Instead, he uses them to define his own language of life, happiness, freedom. It's like he's saying, this is what I've learned from staring down some of life's harshest realities. Aye. And he's not offering some simple solution, some one-size-fits-all answer. He's saying, you have to find your own meaning. And I think that's what makes his story, even though it comes from such a specific, extreme experience, so universal. I mean, who hasn't faced challenges, right? And asked themselves, what's it all about? Absolutely. What's so compelling about war is that he doesn't shy away from those tough questions. Questioning God, questioning reality, questioning everything. And by doing that, he gives us this model for how to live, how to engage with life honestly, but also Hopefully. It's in those questions that you see his resilience. Yeah. And speaking of resilience, there's this other layer to his story that we should talk about. This idea of the power of one single decision. It really all comes down to that, that one decision. He even says it himself. 
My journey started with just one decision, which has kept me alive till today. And he's talking about his father deciding to send him away from Peryang as the war was getting worse. Wow. Just think about that. That one choice made in such a terrifying, uncertain time and how much it impacted War's entire life. It makes you think about your own life, you know, those moments where you make a choice and you had no idea how much it would end up mattering. Definitely. We have more control than we think, even when things feel totally overwhelming. And it's not just his father's decision that had a huge impact. War talks about all the people who helped him along the way, teachers, mentors, people he didn't even know who just showed him kindness. It really shows how powerful just connecting with another human being can be. For sure. Even in the darkest times, that human connection, that feeling that someone else gets it, it can make all the difference in the world. Reminds us that we don't have to go through tough stuff alone. Right. And what I find so inspiring is that War doesn't just say, hey, look for the good in the world. He's saying, go be that good. He even says, live meaningfully, contribute to society, make your time count. It's a call to action, for sure. He could have just ended his story with, look what I survived. But he goes way beyond that, doesn't he? He does. He's challenging us to really think about his experiences and turn them into something real in our own lives. It's pretty amazing. It really is. We've been on quite a journey with him, haven't we? Getting these glimpses into what he went through, how he survived, and how he found meaning in the middle of unimaginable hardship. So as we wrap up here, I'm curious, what will you take with you from Aurora's story? That's a great question. What will stay with you? How will you define your own life, your happiness? 